Hey guys, it's Betty from BakerBetty.com. Now, if you aren't familiar with me, I am a trained chef and baking instructor, and my goal is to help you be a better baker through teaching classic baking techniques and approachable baking science. Now, today we are going to be reviewing all of the equipment that you need to create your own sourdough starter and to start baking bread with it. Now, if you are new to this series, make sure you watch the previous video where we talked about what a sourdough starter is and why you might want to start one of your own. Now, all of the equipment that we will be reviewing today will be linked down in the description box, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now, there are only a few pieces of equipment that you need for creating your actual sourdough starter. And the first and most important one is a digital scale. Now in most baking, I would say that measuring by weight is optional, but for bread baking, I would say it's definitely necessary. When you bake bread, you really need to be very accurate in your measurements. And as you learn bread baking, you will actually find that measuring by weight is going to make things much simpler. Now the second piece of equipment is a digital thermometer. We're going to be using this to take the temperature of our water and to take the temperature of our dough. You don't need a fancy thermometer, but you do need one. It's really important to be accurate with your temperatures. And the last piece of equipment that we need for creating our starter is a container to put our starter in. Now you can use any glass container that you like. Preferably you do want it to be glass so that you can see your starter activity and you want it to be at least 24 ounces in size. Now this is my favorite container to use for sourdough starter. I actually get it at Ikea and I really like it because it has a really wide mouth. The wider the mouth your jar is, the easier it is going to be to get in and out of it when you go to feed your starter. I'm going to link a few different jar options down in the description box. Now ideally you actually want three of these containers. You want one to keep your sourdough starter in, a second one to put your sourdough discard in, and then a third clean one that you can swap out your starter with when you're ready for a clean jar. Now another really handy piece of equipment is one of these little rubber spatulas. It's absolutely optional, but it's really helpful to get down inside your jar and mix up your sourdough starter. Now there are a few additional pieces of equipment that are helpful when you actually go to bake your bread. And the first two are a bowl scraper and a bench scraper. Now a bowl scraper is a flexible piece of plastic and I use this to help mix my dough as well as getting the dough out of my bowl and it's really helpful to scrape dough off of your hands if you do any mixing with your hands. Now a bench scraper is really helpful for dividing your dough, helping to transfer your dough, and also it can help you shape your dough. The next piece of equipment is what is called a banneton basket. Now this is a wicker basket that bread bakers use to proof their bread in. This basket is going to help your bread hold its shape and it also gives that really pretty spiral pattern on the outside of bread that you often see on sourdough. Now this is called a bread lom, and essentially it is a razor blade on the end of a stick. And this is absolutely an optional piece of equipment, but they're fairly inexpensive and they're really helpful for precisely scoring your bread. So if you are going to get very serious about bread baking, I would highly recommend one. The razor blade is very sharp and it helps make really precise cuts in your bread. And the last piece of equipment is a Dutch oven. It is extremely helpful for getting a really nice rise on your bread and to also get that really nice crispy crust. Commercial bread baking ovens have steam injectors in them, so during the first part of baking time, there is steam present in the oven. Now, home ovens do not have this feature, so what a Dutch oven is going to do is the lid is actually going to trap the steam from the bread inside the pot, and it's going to give you that nice steamy environment so you get a really nice rise on your bread, and it kind of mimics what a commercial oven would do. Now, additionally, you do need to have a few simple ingredients on hand before we get started, and those are whole wheat flour and an unbleached white flour. 
Now this white flour can be either bread flour or unbleached all-purpose flour, but it does need to be unbleached or your sourdough starter is not going to work. And then the last ingredient is a rice flour and we won't need that until we start actually baking bread, but we will need that to dust in our banneton basket. Now rice flour can typically be found in the baking section in your grocery store or sometimes you can find it by the specialty flours. Now that is it for all of the basic sourdough baking tools. Now in the description box, I have linked my article where I go more in depth about each of these tools. And I also discuss a few of my favorite books if you want to go a little more in depth about sourdough. Now in our next video, we are going to dive right into making our own sourdough starter from scratch and I cannot wait to get started with you. If you have any questions, please leave those down in the comment section. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video. I'll see you guys next time.